Hey there. Today I just want to talk a little bit about bidirectional scan tools and actuator testing. And by bidirectional, I just mean a scan tool that can monitor and operate actuators by sending signals to the computer modules on your car. Now, these type of scan tools do cost a little bit more than a standard OBD2 reader, but they can be really useful for troubleshooting. And for this demo, I'm going to be using the Xtool A30D, which I did purchase for myself a couple years ago. Um, it's a great scanner. And I checked and they run around 120 bucks right now. So, I mean, it does cost a little more than your, you know, standard cheap, just OBD2 reader that's going to give you live data and, you know, your trouble codes. Um, but these will give you a lot of extra information. Uh, I think I paid around $150 for mine. Okay, for reference, I'm plugging this into a 2014 370Z. So, I do like how it has the voltage on the tool itself, which is kind of nice. Okay, one thing I will say about this Xtool app for their device, um, their scan tool, they are great on updates. I mean, this thing seems to always have updates for different cars. Each car is like a module and you have to download it individually. But um, I usually just say select all, but I can see here there's a ton of updates that are just waiting to be you know, applied. And, and they always seem to have updates coming out, which to me that's great, and especially when I can still get them after two years of owning this thing. Okay, I'm just going to jump forward here. Um, this is an, just did an automatic scan. You can see that this does have some trouble codes. Um, this scan tool reads more than OBD2. It, it also reads the ABS. There's a trouble code. There's a body control module trouble code and an HVAC trouble code. But when I look at the DTC report, I can see that the, okay, battery abnormal. That was a past one. The right front flat tire, that's passed. And it does have a sun load sensor that is a current issue so i'll probably just clear all these see if it comes back and um you know this scanner also does live data and all that other stuff just like you know your a lot of the other scan tools out there but let's jump into the other testing that we want to look at the actuator stuff okay i cleared those trouble codes and here i'll, I'll just while i was on the main screen show you there are special functions and that's stuff here like your electronic parking brake your steering angle sensor, um, gearbox match. I mean, there's, there's a lot of things you can do in here besides, you know, the actuator testing. So again, um, I'll kind of go through and do a separate video on some of the special functions at some point in time, you know, as I come across things I use it for. But let's jump into the actuator testing. Okay, it looks like that HVAC failure <laughs> came back. So this is a good place to start. Um, so going in there, first, I'm just gonna look at the diagnostic trouble code just to see what it is before I do an actuator test um, just because I'm already in the system I'll just do the act an actuator test on this system but um I have a feeling this is gonna be that same sun load sensor I'll just share the screen here on the video that makes it easier for you guys to see but yep it is sun load sensor again so um, looks like I actually might have a problem with the sun load sensor so um, I'll have to troubleshoot that but let me go into actuator test and I'm just gonna go into the heater vent air conditioning test and here you can kind of see there's there's I think it was seven modes and um right right now it's you know it's, it's off but you can switch modes and it's going to go ahead and run like whatever test is for that mode here, here I'm doing mode one and I have the service manual so I know mode one is like um it's a full coat test full cold test with a blower motor running at 37 percent magnet clutch on the ECV duty ratio is 100 percent um, and then uh, mode 2 here has 91% uh, on that blower motor, so it's really loud, so I had to lower that um, sound on the video. But anyways, in the case of the HVAC here, um, you can do operational checks of your air conditioning system um, by just selecting the mode here on the app itself, which is, which is really nice. But of course, for these, it's kind of nice to have that factory service manual too, so you can see, kind of see what it's supposed to be doing to kind of compare. So, um, so some of these actuator testing, you'll, you'll really want to, um, you know, be careful with if you don't know what they're doing. Um, but some of them are, are kind of self-explanatory too. I uh, like, um, and that's something that I should probably say is, you know, playing with these actuators. I mean, you, you do have to be careful. You, you could do something that could damage your vehicle. Um, you know, or injure yourself. So, you know, be careful and, and kind of do this at your own risk. Um, the factory service manual is really helpful to kind of show you what these are in advance, you know, before you run a test. So, you know, but again, it, it's a valuable tool. You just have to be careful with it. 
Okay, so I jumped in the body control module and we'll just do a couple other things um, like door lock. Um, so let me go ahead and hit door lock here. Um, you can see there's, a, there's a, quite a few in here. So door lock, this should be an easy one for everybody to see in the video too. Um, so now I'm just going to go up to actuator test. stabilize a little bit here so you can see it in the video you can see my door lock up there on the left hard to do it with uh, one hand so okay so you can see in the door lock you have you know you can do all locks you can do all unlock um, driver unlock and here you can see I'm doing it okay it was already unlocked okay there I locked it and you can kind of see in the upper corner that you're locking the door now why is this useful um, well, maybe you have a you want to know if that motor is working, you know, if that's able to actually switch it, and or if your door switch is actually broken. So if you're able to control it from the ECM, and you can't control it from your door switch, that kind of gives you some clues, like maybe you need to check out your wiring, or maybe your door switch is bad, or something like that. Okay, here's another one we can do. Um, I'll pick buzzer on here, and let's just um, go ahead and do the light worn buzzer turn that on yep you can hear the buzzer light <laughs> i guess so anyways uh i've never had to troubleshoot a buzzer light but maybe this is useful for some use case okay i'll just do the do the wipers here go into test and what do we got here um i guess low high and inlet so I try to do this. Well, I was trying to hit this to where I could have both of them in, but I'm sharing my screen, so it probably didn't matter. Um, but anyways, you can hit. Um, this is gonna do exactly what you think it does. You know, I can hit low, and we're gonna see the windshield wipers go at low speed. I can hit high; they go to high speed, and I can turn them off. So maybe you have a maybe you're wondering if your switch is working on your column, you know, for your windshield wipers. Um, you know, you're able to trigger from the ECU, but your windshield wiper switch isn't working, so that might give you a clue on, you know, what you need to investigate next. Okay, um, another one, you know, headlights. Let's let's jump out and look at the headlights. I mean, that's kind of nice. I mean, you you can basically test all your lights, which is you know having a Bluetooth. A scanner like this is nice. You know, I can check my brake lights by just, you know, standing in the back and hit the button and watch my brake lights come on. Um, but this way, you can see if you know, just check out your headlights. Um, make sure that they come on. So let me do it here. We'll hit headlamp. Let's see if I can. I'm trying to hold my phone and the tablet at the same time in film. So, but. So here you can see you can do your tail lamp, your headlamp, your front fog lamp. So I'm just going to the headlights and I reach over here while holding the phone. I'll just put it on low. And gosh, I got my screen blocking it. So hang on. But they did turn on. And I just turned them back off. And it's the same thing for here. You know, I can just turn on my tail lights by clicking the on button. And there you can see that they're on. And I might as well pop open the trunk, so I'll just hit the trunk open button. And you can see you can use it to control, you know, the trunk actuator, which is nice. So, like that. And the trunk opens up. Sorry for the noise today. It's just a noisy day out here. Okay, now we're looking at the engine actuator. So, um, let's say we've got power balance. Okay, power balance is a good one. Um, this one's interesting. Basically, what you do with a power balance is you're looking for, like, a bad cylinder. So basically you're shutting down a cylinder one at a time and watching kind of your RPMs and how the engine runs. So if you're kind of having a misfire in one cylinder and then and you shut down another cylinder, yeah, your car's going to run worse. But if you get to where you shut down a cylinder 
and the car runs the same, then you know that's probably the bad cylinder. I hope that makes sense. You can Google it. There's a lot more information on it, but I'll go ahead and shut down one of the cylinders here and you can just see that it's going to basically run bad. Now, one thing I don't recall is how it's shutting down the cylinder. I think, I don't know if it's shutting down the spark or the fuel or both, but um, I'll go ahead and do it to cylinder one. I'll remove that little screen so you can doesn't get distracted. You can see the tachometer. Okay, you can see the tach. I'll go ahead and click OK for cylinder one. And oh, I don't know if you can hear that, but it's running really bad. Um, it doesn't really change much on the tach, but I'm just going to back out of it. I'm back to normal. Okay. Back to normal, that sounds much better. The engine's much, much smoother. Um, it, it definitely got rough, and you can definitely tell it was, you know, like a misfiring situation. Okay, next I'll try the fan duty control. And here you can see the fans are at zero. The coolant temperature kind of shows what that is. Um, and then you can, you can bump up the, the fan. Hmm. Let's go... Let me go outside and, and we'll demo this a little better. Okay, you could hear those fans, you know, increase in speed as I, I bumped up that duty cycle and they came back down. Then, of course, you have your regular live data stuff in here, which is always great. So, you know, these enhanced OBD scanners really do a lot of stuff. And, and I don't know, I just think they're great. Well, the whole goal of this video was just to kind of show you what um, these bidirectional scan tools can do. Um, so you can kind of see their capabilities and how they can, you know, play with the actuator testing and I, I hope it was helpful um i think it can be very useful in troubleshooting and it does cost more to buy a scanner with these but you don't need the one i have showing here i mean there's handhelds that can do bi-directional and, and you know trigger actuators and stuff as well so um lots of good good scan tools out there so anyways um i hope that was helpful and thanks for watching